What happens when you wake up a zombie? It becomes a bot. And how do zombies get there? Usually it's worms that do the dirty deed. Zombies, bots, worms, spiders, backdoors and trojans. Scary sounding names for a scary phenomenon. Not only can your data be corrupted or destroyed, but your computer can be hijacked for malicious use. All your personal information can be stolen. Computer security is everyone's business. Computing without security or computing without trust implies don't do computing at all. Because if you don't practice safe computing, it's only a matter of time before you're attacked. In 2000, uh, Deloitte did a, a study in which we put um, a Linux machine and a Windows machine, both running web servers and databases, in their default configurations on the internet. We found that they were both compromised within the first half hour, and from then on they were compromised regularly again and again. These attacks often came from programs called spiders. They're designed to troll the internet and look for open ports, like a thief looking for open doors, and then report back to their authors. People will break into a system because it's vulnerable not because of what technology it's running, nor what information it contains. Not all attacks are malicious. It could be curious computer students exploring the internet. But then it could be spammers who want to use your computer for relaying junk mail, or criminals who are out to steal your identity. There are a lot of uh, software available on the internet today that can enable a lot of people just to uh, you know, commit identity theft. It's software called spyware that operates in the background, logging keystrokes and mouse clicks and sending this information back to its author. That's how your credit card details, PIN numbers and passwords can fall into the hands of someone who can then transact on your behalf. A hacker would probably not try and hack into a bank. Um, the banks probably got big security systems at play. If you can hack the man at home's system, you've got a trusted relationship by proxy straight into the bank. Most common vulnerabilities are found through two ways. One is malconfiguration or weak configuration of the operating system and the network services that it offers, where somebody with specially customized code can run programs against these services and use that as an entry point to break into the machine and become the administrator of that machine and with that access they now have total control over the system and can access all data on it and then also use it as a launching pad for attacks on other systems. Let's talk about open source versus proprietary security software. As soon as a vulnerability is announced or declared in the market the world community of the open source community is responding now and they're responding firstly by announcing it and secondly they're responding by recommended ways to address the problem. In the commercial software world, your time to respond tends to be cloaked by a lot of commercial issues. And, and that's one of the reasons why security systems themselves tend to be based on open source technologies. But no matter what you do, the weakest link is always the human element. Often during penetration testing exercises, security consultants will send out uh, emails to the users in the organization and they will contain a, a malicious attachment. We find on average around about 10% of these programs will be executed and uh, they allow us to bypass all the firewalls and other perimeter security devices that are in place in organizations. So it just goes to show that it takes one user's mistake to get in. The uh, organization has to lock every single door but we only have to find one unlocked door to get in. 